As promised, here are the new uh, heroes and all remaining quests that would be revealed in a PC Gamer article. The first hero is Sire the Nephrius, who got a passive hero power, it seems, who done it. At the start of the game, choose one of two quests. We need context with this. This is kind of, this seems like a Gilwing hero power, so Sire leads hard to new quest system. Oh, it's just new quests. I thought it was like quest lines like with Gilwing, but the quests that I discussed in previous video, you basically choose two of those instantly instead of one at uh, the six gold turn which is turn four um so you just get two quests to start the, at the start of the game we have to see all of the other quests to see how strong this will actually be and how big of an impact quest is going to have on the game but if quests are good and we saw them being pretty decent maybe there's some broken combinations and some cool stuff you can do with this the nephrius is extremely flexible uh, sad mitchell and yeah it seems like one of those heroes that just plays different every game and those are very often pretty fun the other hero is who is this murloc holmes zero gold hero parts are usually pretty good detective for hire look at two minions guess which one your next opponent had last combat for a coin so this is kind of a gamble sometimes it's going to be pretty obvious of course if you face a mech player and it shows you a demon and a mech you're going to take the mech uh, but maybe i don't know what kind of cards it's going to choose from maybe if it sees if your opponent has a full board of demons it is going to offer two demons i don't know how smart the ai is going to be here um but you get basically a coin every turn if you can guess correctly which is a worse lord barov it's kind of a Lich Baziel, but now Lich Baziel has changed, so it was a Lich Baziel without the downside of taking damage. Although you get the coin a turn later, not the turn instantly, so you're one coin behind. Doesn't seem that strong. It seems okay if you can reliably guess constantly, like right every turn. But still, it seems like not an S tier hero. Yeah, it doesn't, like, it's it's a worse Lord Barrett, but it doesn't specify how good, like, what cards it's going to offer you. If it's always going to offer the tribe that it shows your opponent this, or if it's just going to be a random card as well. Because this could be super easy. Now, I don't think there's too much to say about these heroes. They're, like, not that much interesting things to talk about here, or interesting lines I see. Uh, so let's go over the quests, I guess. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Interestingly, the minions will be asked to guess between when playing as Marlock Holmes. Won't be entirely random. Lowen tells me that there's some canny AI being used behind the scenes to ensure the choice is challenging. That makes the hero much worse. So now it's actually going to be challenging to get a coin every turn. The kind of sneaky logic behind it. Um, so yeah, it, that, make, that means the hero is probably not going to be that good. Well, you'll find 10 quest types that aren't revealed with initial announcement this morning. Note that the exact requirements of each quest will vary depending on the power of the hero you're playing. So as we saw, there's going to be a lot of balance into how these quests uh, are going to be offered to you. Now this is witness protection quest. Have a friendly taunt minion attacked eight times i could be super easy to complete um so yeah i don't think there's there's much to say here this seems like just pretty easy depending on the kind of board you have then unmask the culprit quest lose or tie free combat that's way harder because you have to actively lose lose a lot of health to complete it so i assume this is going to be tied with a big reward because having to lose or tie free combats you know you really gotta actively work for that and you're gonna be behind on the lobby track the footprint quest have bob stavern refreshed 10 times uh, again, some heroes are gonna have an easier time with this, like no, um, Nosdormu, yes, uh, or maybe Arana, but the refreshing 10 times is a lot of gold, that's 10 gold that you're gonna waste, essentially. Although refreshing it is also at the start of your turn, you see a new tavern, I think it also counts as a refreshed tavern, so technically it's gonna be less gold, but still, pretty expensive. Sorted all out quest, order your minions from the lowest to highest attack for 4 combats? For 4 combats, first of all, 4 combats is a long time, you, you might not be alive by then, plus you have to order your minions really poorly. So you'll have to order your minions, minions poorly, which is kind of the same as this. You'll have to lose or tie multiple combats then because, well, unless you're super strong, but very often you're gonna have suboptimal positioning, you're gonna lose health, plus you need to wait four combats. I think this is gonna get you killed. Invite the guests is just buying seven minions. That seems really easy. Most compositions buy seven minions like on, on, on one or two turns. Okay, one is maybe two, maybe three turns. That's the most, I think. Find the murder weapon quest, increase a friendly minion stats 15 times. Again, sometimes it's going to be easy. If you have Agam or something that instantly like scales up your board quickly, you could get this done in one turn. But early on, this seems pretty hard because whenever you buy a jug, you're going to get only like three triggers from this. Uh, and that's not that much. So yeah, this seems better to or easier to complete in the end game. Not sure how long it's going to take, but at least three or four turns, I would say. Follow the money quest, spend 25 gold. This is just spend. So rolling, buying. So this is usually going to be two or three turns probably two because during the turn you buy sell as well uh, seems like a very easy quest you don't need to do anything stupid or lose fights or stuff like that exhume the bones trigger six friendly death rattles 
could also be done in a single combat phase, depending if you're playing Deathwing or Grave or just have Death Rattles laying on the board. This could instantly trigger, so it doesn't seem that hard. You also don't need to throw, like some of these quests you need to actively do something that hurts you. Here you don't, you can just play a normal board and get it done in two or three turns even. Dust for Prince, add 15 cards to your hand. Again, really good in the end game, depending on the kind of composition you're gonna play if you cycle a lot of cards. But 15 cards in your hand is, seems actually pretty hard to get. Now, uh, adding to your hand also means that it works with Witch Wing and other cards on the board that generate you more cards. So any Avenge synergies on tier four, or maybe Genie on tier six. But um, again, I'm talking about higher tiers now and still it's gonna take you multiple turns. So if, if you play Murlocs, this is done a single turn with brand and lookout yeah cry for help quest play six battle cry minions i think all of these are so situational i think with every quest i've said yeah it depends on the kind of composition you're playing so really i feel like most games are going to be super interesting because every every game is going to play different and i hope this is so far one of the most fun mechanics i've seen or one of the fun most fun introductions because compared to buddies this does not seem as streamlined and as basic and the same as every every other game because this really depends on the hero you're playing what your board looks like the tribes because battle cries could be hard to play if you're not like if you're a mech comp you might not be playing any battle cries at all maybe leaper that's about it playing murlocs again this is instantly done so very situational so those are the quests but it is not the reward so we actually have not seen any rewards being revealed right so that's it we just got a bunch of like quests that you can go on reveal two new heroes that i couldn't say too much about because I think this one is pretty bad. It's the worst Lich Baziel. Uh, and this one. Quests so far seem impactful, but some of quest lines seem pretty hard to complete. So we'll we'll have to wait and see what the rewards are, if they're actually worth it. Because right now we only have free rewards again, shown in a previous video. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be making a lot more videos on uh well it, when stuff gets revealed, so we can have a full clear picture, and of course about the, the runestone stuff that uh, I still need to mention. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.